So, and this is a thing I think that is often missed. It's really, Dawn invented this device for electronic music, capital E, capital M, the discipline of composition that was electronic music, which wasn't just music that uses electronic sound sources. There was actually a discipline associated with that compositional style. And that's what Don was designing these instruments for. Certainly people use the easel in that way. There are a lot of opportunities for you to hear people very artfully using the easel to create interesting avant-garde, unique abstract sounds. But and this is probably blasphemous to say, if you want a really powerful synthesizer that makes really cool sounds that you want to use in traditional music, I think the easel has been really underutilized in that realm. You can use this in the same way that you use any vintage design, but you're going to get a lot more out of this small space than you would get out of just about any... Um, compartmentalized single instrument synthesizer that was that came out in the 1970s. It is astoundingly powerful. And we're still not even done with the dual low pass gate in the sense that we have to go up here to the gate two source. If you switch the gate two source up, primarily what you're doing is you're switching to the preamp input and then gate two will be whatever you are feeding in this aux in and you have the ability to set the amplitude of it here and also you get an envelope detector that comes out of that so whatever you are piping into this preamp from probably an external source the amplitude is also creating envelope uh, basically as your sound gets louder the voltage gets higher. As your sound gets more quiet, the voltage goes lower. And then you can use that to control voltage control anything that has an input on the easel. So that is a really cool thing. When you have this switched up, so that audio is coming into your gate two input instead of the modulation oscillator. So, but if you don't have anything plugged in right there, what you're gonna get is noise. So that's a really cool thing. If there's something plugged in here, you're going to get whatever you're plugged in. If there isn't anything plugged in there, you have a noise source for the first time. The original easel didn't have it. The easel that came out in 2013 didn't have it, but this one does. So that's cool. Um, also, if you have it in the center position, that is the situation where the complex oscillator is directed to gate one and the modulation oscillator is directed to gate two. If you switch it downward, then things get weird. <laughs> okay, so what's happening when you switch it downward is uh, the output from the complex oscillator is also going to gate two. And but it is going to gate to 180 degrees out of phase. So then we get into some, you know, relatively complex electronic physics and you get all kinds of harmonic interactions that are happening. So like, for example, if you have the voltage controlled amp, uh, both of them set to voltage controlled amp, then you'll get... The opportunity to uh, right now we're making a high pass filter and then the relationship their relationship is affected by whatever voltage you have going into here so you'll get weird outcomes like that when I'm playing, you're actually hearing uh, the high pass filter kicking in because the voltage is affecting it in that way. There are also phase cancellations that happen. So that gets weird. And if like we switch to low pass filter, now there's, you have different spectra of sounds of different spectra of harmonics going against each other because of the, the out of phase aspect. And you can actually get weird sort of filtery sounds. So 
Yeah, it's and it's really weird. It's not like a prescribed thing. I mean, you certainly can get outcomes like the ones I described, but you also get different weird outcomes that you can't predict because what you're doing is these these uh, the input is this the harmonic content is messed with because you are because it's 100 degree 180 degrees out of phase. So when you have this in the down position, you're going to get a lot of weird stuff. Just remember a lot of times when it, you don't get the outcome you expect, like if you heard these things, you'd be like, what is going on? And the answer is you are switched downward in the gate two source. So you're not going to get just the complex oscillator going to gate one or the modulation oscillator going to gate two. They are mixing and they're mixing in a bizarre way that uh, if you're not expecting that, it can be a little bit alarming. And what you're probably sensing now is that the e the easel is particularly fantastic at sound design for these reasons. You can create really complex and interesting timbres that you wouldn't get from vintage synthesizers or even a lot of modern synthesizers because this architecture is so unique and it's capable of so much interesting functionality. Uh, yeah, I can't help myself. I mean, I'm trying to explain this, but it's hard not to just make really cool noises because it's, we're now capable. Now that we've covered oscillators and the dual low pass gate, I can start doing some of the creative stuff. Now I've done, you'll notice we have that really cool sound and there's almost no patching happening. That's what it's like using the easel. You can only imagine what happens when you start modulating all of these various aspects where you have modulation controlling the complex oscillator from the modulation oscillator and you're controlling how much that is happening and the various speeds of it. And then you're messing with the spectra when you've got this in the downward position. Uh, yeah, it just gets complicated and beautiful very, very quickly. Anyway, so keep in mind that I have been using relatively traditional ways to control the dual low pass gate. You can also do things like, um, you can control it with, a, with uh, the random or these purple outputs, which are pressure when you have a Buchla device like a 218 connected to it or their whatever modulation source you plug into the pressure. So if you have an external source or you want to take the mod output from the modulation oscillator and put it in here, you can access it from all of these purple outputs. You could use that to control it. You could do a thing like, uh, we'll probably talk more about this sort of thing, take the pulser output, invert it in the inverter, put it into the pressure, then you have positive... Um, pulsar coming out of yellow and negative pulsar coming out of purple. And you could use those to control the gates. So I just love thinking about this in the context of 1973 and going, holy crap, this thing is head and shoulders beyond anything else that was happening. You may know I am a very large Minimoog fan, but this thing, wow, uh, it was considerably more powerful than <laughs> the Minimoog in a variety of ways. But, uh, and no one did anything like this throughout the 70s 
uh, unless you're talking about some of the digital stuff that was done or 80s or even now people are still not making standalone devices that have some of these interesting layers of outcome. Anyway, this is the dual low pass gate. Oh, and one more thing before I go. Uh, if you're having trouble routing and you're not understanding why you're not hearing what you expect to hear, take a look at these lights because the lights will tell you if gate one and gate two are getting signals or getting uh, controlled. So they are really helpful when you're going, hey, why, aren't, why am I not hearing any sound? And you can look there and if what you're doing isn't generating those lights, you know, uh, you've got to figure out what where you've gone wrong. Anyway, that is the dual low pass gate.